Welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast, brought to you by Active Management, the world's leading fitness business coaches who in 2015 will help you hashtag grow your business. This is the world's number one podcast for fitness business owners and managers. We interview real owners and learn what has been working for them to make them so successful. Here's the host of the Fitness Business Podcast, Chantal. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever and whenever you're listening from around the globe. Welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. What a show we have for you today. JT from Active Management is back. He's just gotten off the plane from Russia, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the Russian fitness industry, plus he dives into the consumer trend known as universe. Our resident podcast expert, Sharon, is here to tell us all about the very best equipment that you need to kickstart your very own podcast. Plus, we hear more from one of our awesome sponsors, Visual Fitness Planner, and learn about why the VFP is the ultimate way to improve your club set show close percentages. All that and much more in this week's episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. You're listening to the Fitness Business Podcast. Welcome to all our listeners and welcome back to one of our podcast regulars. He's the Managing Director of Active Management, Justin Tamsett. Hey, JT. Hi, Chantel. How are you? Very good. Great to have you back with us today. It's good to be live. Now, tell us, what exactly are you going to be sharing with us today? Well, today I'm going to talk about the universe. You're going to talk about the universe? I am pretty sure this show is about fitness business. Uh... All right, well, I'm still going to talk about the universe. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> but maybe not the universe as you're thinking. I'm thinking universe as in Y-O-U hyphen universe. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking about that the consumer now lives in their own universe. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Well, look forward to chatting about that a little bit later on. Now, you know, I love starting off our chats to hear a little bit about what you've been up to. You are constantly jetting from one place to the other. Um, generally, you know, can't keep up with your schedule. So <laughs> tell us what is it that you've been up to? Well, last month you gave me a lead in to sound like a real wanker when I'm talking about Harvard Business Review yep, yep. <laughs> magazine, and now you're telling me I'm a jet setter. Yeah, well. Well, I'm going to live up to that. Excellent. Uh, since our last show that we did, I have been to Russia. Wow. And London, and then home. I think that that's my trips. A uh, trip to Melbourne as well in Sydney, uh, in Australia. But, yeah, big trip to Russia. Wow, building the frequent fly points. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a fascinating industry, the Russian fitness industry. It is certainly a growing industry. They are very professional. Their facilities are exquisite, just beautifully appointed, just fantastic. What is interesting, though, is that they, they're sort of – they're a little bit behind in the sales management and how they run their sales systems compared to probably the rest of the world. Um, and I don't know if it's in their DNA, but the conversations that I have with some people are quite funny in the sense that they'd say, you know, my salesperson isn't performing, you know, I fire them. And I'm like, what about a warning or what about some coaching? No, we just fire them. I'm like, oh, gosh. It's one way to deal with the problem. <laughs> yeah. Then I started to think, you know, do you mean you fire them like in the firing squad or you just get rid of them and dismiss them? But no, they, they, they really have, I guess, a, a lower tolerance for performance standards, yep. probably compared to the rest of the world. Now, I don't know why that is. It, it Maybe it's their, their history of, of their, their nation. But I think as an industry, they are probably at one extreme and at the other extreme is the rest of us. <laughs> where we give someone three, four, five, six job warnings or weeks or months when they're underperforming before we move them on. So I think somewhere in between the rush and fire them straight away and the rest of us which give people so much time is the right medium for us in business to determine when people aren't performing. Do you think, have you, in your travels, have you come across anyone that's getting close to that kind of happy medium? Oh, look, I think there are some individuals, yeah, absolutely, uh, within around the world. You know, they, they really get the idea 
of coaching. Uh, and I think that is a, a really key aspect. I did some work with some Anytime Fitness franchises here in Australia. And I think one of the real keys is this concept of not necessarily training, but coaching them. I think when you've got a new person, you can train them. But when you've got a team that has been around for a while, you need to coach them. There's a slightly a different. Yeah. Yeah. And as a rugby coach, I get the coaching side of things. Um, as a business coach, I kind of get it. It's not like I'm going to give you the answer. You've got to find the answer. And I think that's where you help the people grow and make them better. One of the things we did with this Anytime Fitness crew is we, we did some work around learning styles. Mm-hmm. And that was really interesting because a lot of them didn't really understand what they were or what learning styles actually meant. So we try, I gave them a little uh, assessment task, which we could probably put on the show notes that people could download from Swinburne University, and it helps determine whether somebody is a visual person, a kinesthetic person, or an auditory person. So when you're coaching them, then we're, what we need to do is we need to have a better idea on whether we're coaching a visual person, an auditory person, or a kinesthetic person. And often in sales, the key is role play. And I hated role play. <laughs> and I know my staff oh, hated role play. A lot of people play. do, yeah. But it's easier to justify to somebody to do role play if they understand that they are a kinesthetic person because they need to do it. Makes total sense, yeah. Whereas if somebody's an auditory person, you can say, this is how you need to do it, they pick it up and away they go. There's not a lot of auditory people out there. Yeah. So that that was particularly interesting. Now, you know, I obviously didn't do any of that in Russia because I didn't have enough time with the, with the group that I worked with, but we have done it with a number of clients and we're seeing some great results. And one thing that really profoundly hit me was when I was working with the, the Anytime crew is one of the team there said, it just dawned on me. I need to transfer how I behave to behave like the customer and teach them, not the way I'm taught. And I went, yep, my job here is done. Thank you. And moved on. But that to me is a really critical component is that when we understand our component's learning style, our consumer's learning style or our um, personal training client's learning style, then we have to flip ourselves to match that. Like I get the behaviour styles, DISC, Myers, Briggs, and I think all of that is relevant, is very relevant, but I think if we understand how they learn, because often new people coming into into our clubs are brand new to exercise, the behaviour styles are relevant but not important because we've got to teach them a whole lot more stuff. Does that make any sense? It does, it does, and I, I think it's relevant regardless of what industry. We're talking about the fitness industry, but that is so relevant with any customer that you're dealing with or any yeah. clientele if you can understand them better. And, all um, kids. Oh, there you go, all kids. You know, if you understand how your kids learn, mm-hmm. then you can teach them. I know, like, I was teaching Zoe, my daughter, how to kick a ball, and I'm going, you just hold it here, drop it, and kick. Hold the ball at your waist, drop it, and bring your leg up when the ball's coming down. And she's just looking at me blankly. It's like, Dad, I have no idea what you're saying. It. And then I showed her, and she kind of got a bit more of an idea. But when I actually held her hand, dropped that ball with her, and which I went, "You're kinesthetic." Learner. There you go. Exactly. You got to do Bingo. to learn. Yep. Yep. Well, look, if we can get that learning styles um, up on the show notes, we'll definitely we'll yep. give that a go. Yeah. No, we can. Okay. I'm sure we can. That's so, easy. Russia, tick. Tick, learning styles, tick. Oh, another one is a really cool, I guess it's an app, called Canva. Ah, I love Canva. It's a really cool, I've never heard of it until just the other day and I went, look, went online and had a look at it and went, that is a cool product for anybody in business. Yep. Particularly single operators or independent club owners that are listening who don't have a big budget. It's like, this is cool. Do you want to tell everybody what it is? I kind of do. I'm really excited because the words Canva has made me really excited. Um, Yeah, so for anyone that hasn't discovered Canva yet, this is a really cool tool where basically you can do amazing designs. You can jump on, you can upload your logo, you can use your own photos that you've taken to create marketing pieces for your business effectively. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's really strategically placed around social media. Mm -hmm. So they've already got the inbuilt templates or size templates for Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook banners. Uh, And as you say, you can upload your own photo or I think 
last time I looked, they had she had over a million people. Yeah. And and you pay on, like a dollar yeah. to use an image, yeah. which is which is previously unheard of. And you can put whatever message you want. There are some images that are free. Yeah. Yep. And I I'm pretty sure the person that set it up is an Australian lady. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But it's cool also because there are so many font types to choose from, so many design styles to choose from. It is it is makes it so easy for you to do a really cool updated cover for your Facebook page yep. or to, um, you know, get something for your Twitter or whatever it is. It, it is very simple, easy to use. Yeah, it's a cool little and cheap. and cheap. If not free. If not free. Yeah. I, I can't work out the business model. I don't know how she makes any money at selling it at a dollar, but she might have, if she's got 40,000 people who download oh. something for a dollar for the day, yep. it's not a bad business model. It's pretty good. The other thing that I don't know much about and I'm just getting my head around, so I would encourage the show listeners to investigate or even share with us on our show page their experiences is this thing called, that Facebook are rolling out called lookalike lists. What I believe you can do is if you've got a MailChimp database, which lots of people use for their, their distribution, and if you don't, we can put that in the show notes, MailChimp.com, and you can export that into a CSV file you can load that into Facebook. Facebook will then go in and identify all the people who have got their Facebook profiles to that email address. Now, how are you going to put an email address in to set up Facebook? Mm-hmm. So if that's exactly the same email address as what you've got on MailChimp, it'll identify that person. It'll find you. You can then do your target marketing on Facebook oh. based on that database. Wow. It's that's, pretty cool. That's really specific. Yeah, it's really cool. So in other words, you send an email out about we've got a boot camp starting in six weeks on your MailChimp database. You can then put that database into Facebook. It'll identify all those people. You can then run a sponsored post or a boosted post around all the people who are in that MailChimp and they'll see on their news feed two, three times, how many times you set it up, the promotion of the six-week boot camp. Wow. So if you've got a database, say, of 2,500 people and mm-hmm. you've, you've sent them out a MailChimp message but for whatever reason maybe only 800 of them opened or 800 of them viewed, this is a second opportunity, Correct. is it? Second chance to get the yeah. message in front of your market. Yeah. So what we can do, Chantel, is you're right, it gives us another chance, but what we'll do for all the listeners is we'll put some information on the show notes, maybe a couple of videos or links, whatever we can find that will explain it better than us. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. We'll find the Facebook Facebook experts that can help yes, there. Yes, let's do that. Okay, so let's move on to our topic for today. The topic is universe. Yeah, look, I really like the name of this. I love the pun, but when you see it written Y-O-U, hyphen if you want, or N-I-V-E-R-S-E, you get what it's about. And and this, for me, is a really critical component to the fitness industry, a critical component to keeping our members, a critical component to getting new members is understanding that we are guests in our prospect's universe. They're not coming into our universe. We are guests. So if If I come into your house, Mm -hmm. if I come into your Mm -hmm. house and I'm a guest, do I put my feet on the table? No, I would hope not. Yeah, thank you. I would hope not. (laughs) Do I, I don't know, spit on the floor? Do I treat the place like my, like shit? You would hope not. No, because I'm a guest. Yeah. And I think if I'm a guest in your house, I respect you and I respect your property. Mm -hmm. I respect who you are. And I think that's what we need to understand in business is that the consumer now is living in their own universe, so we must therefore respect them and respect what their views are, their core values, and not flip it around and and saying that the consumer is, you're in guest in our club. No, it's the other way around. Does that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're finding now with the consumer, which I believe is really cool, is that the consumer, because we're going into their universe because we respect them, they're more willing than ever before to give us their personal information. 
So they're more willing to give us their email address, their name, their phone number, contact details, their exercise history. They're more willing to give us all of that information more than ever before. But there's a proviso. What's that? Firstly, they've got to trust us. They have to not just trust us, but implicitly trust us. And that level of trust is really hard to develop online. Very difficult to do online, but it can be done. But it's really easy to do once they become a member, obviously, or a client. It's much easier. The second is the result of having this information about our customer is that we then provide three keywords, a seamless, a comprehensive, and a personalized service. So let me say that again. The consumer is going to be happy to give us their contact details, happy to enter in a conversation with us, happy to entertain them in their universe if they trust us implicitly and the result of us having that information is that they get a seamless, comprehensive, personalised service. Got it. I'm not sure in our industry all people, personal trainers, club managers, club owners, independent clubs, chain clubs, franchise clubs can deliver seamless, comprehensive, Mm -hmm. personalised Mm -hmm. service. That would be the challenge in order to meet today's consumer in order to get that information. So I think in our business, this is of so far of the trends that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. To me, I think this is a really critical one where we need to spend a lot of energy. If we can up the level of personalisation you deliver, if we can up that seamless process, then I think it's going to help. Josie, have you come across any examples, um, you don't have to name names, but any examples of people that are doing a good job in that area or are getting close to doing a good job? How about I do the opposite? Who's doing Um, a really bad job? (laughs) Okay, let's do that. Well, it's not who's doing a bad job, but it's the process. Okay. So, for example, a prospect rings up. And we ask them on the phone some basic questions about their exercise history. What are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows the script that we would take for an incoming call. The prospect gives us the answers to all those questions. Then when they come in to have a look around, we built some trust. They've given us the information. They come in to have a look around. And they don't meet with the person that took the phone call. They meet with somebody else. So then they sit down with a salesperson or a club manager, whoever's doing the tour. And what are the questions that that person asks? Uh, name, information, all of the stuff that they've just been asked over On the, the phone. phone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for somebody who is, let's say they're really embarrassed about their personal life, that they've let themselves run down, they're emotionally hurting, when we've emotionally hurt them on the phone to create a need to come in, which is what we want to do, they then walk in. We know they've got an open, gaping wound of pain And then we say, tell us all of it again. It's like putting a knife in and twisting that further. Whereas I think we could say, now when you spoke with Fiona on the phone, she has told me that this is basically where you're at. Do you want to tell me some more about that? It's a different conversation. Does that make sense? It does. So then you join the club and you have your first appointment with a gym instructor or a personal trainer who's having a doing a fitness assessment, what does the personal trainer or the gym instructor say first up? Before we write your program, I need to know your goals and your exercise history. So not only have we put a knife into that wound and twisted it, now we're putting a bucket load of salt on it. So this person is screaming in agony and thinking, what the are you guys doing? I told the person on the phone, I told the person when I first walked in, and now I'm going to tell you again. So there's no seamlessness. There's no personalization. It's not comprehensive. It actually shows how weak our communication is within our organization. So that erodes the trust. That erodes the respect that you have as me in your universe. So in other words, I'm coming to your universe, Jim, as opposed to you coming to me. So I think one of the really easy things we could do is streamline the passing of that information. And I don't care whether it's on paper or it's on a file on a computer. It doesn't matter how we do it, but I think it's an area that we can all improve on so that that person only goes through that emotional pain once. We can still push those pain points in a sales presentation to convert a sale, but we haven't got to stick a knife in and create more agony for them. 
Does that make sense? It does, it does. And it makes me wonder if one of the reasons that we stumble on this so often is because each person takes charge of their own individual department. Correct. And and all too often we don't have someone that oversees that that seamless transition, that journey yeah. that a member takes. So so perhaps part of looking at solutions for this problem is do we need to, to have one person take control so that they can follow that journey or they can at least manage it and make sure that that is seamless, that it's yeah. a good experience for the member. Yeah, I don't think it matters whether it's one person that does it or whether it's a system, mm-hmm. but it's an aspect that we need to look at because, as I say, the consumer wants to give that information, yeah. but the proviso is that they trust us and, as a result of that information, I'm going to get a personalised, seamless, comprehensive service. Yep. If anyone out there is thinking, you know what, we nail this, we do a really good job of taking our members through this experience and and, and through the journey that we're talking about, then let us know. Yeah. Tell us about it. Share your um, experience with our listeners and we'd love to to hear from you on that. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Now, I think what tends to happen in health clubs, not so much with PT businesses, I guess, but from a health club perspective, is that we often lock people into a contract, a 12-month mm-hmm. contract or an 18-month contract or even PT, we lock them into 10 sessions. Here's what we can do is if we are visiting their universe and we're respecting them, we've built the trust, we're providing this service to them where they get that all that information, these people will no longer be locked into our product. They'll be loved into our product. It's cool, I like right? that. I like that. So I think our goal is that, With every contact that we have with a prospect, we start with that process of having them to loved in, Mm -hmm. not locked in. And that's the challenge that I want to leave everybody today is to go away and look at our systems, look at how we do it because we know they're prepared to give us the information. Let's work out what we need to do so that we respect that and therefore we have them loved into our gym, loved into our personal trainer, loved into our PT studio, whatever our business is, not locked in. That's a good good challenge for everyone to take away from today. Yeah, sure is. Excellent. Okay, JT, thank you so much for talking to us today about universe and um and once again i really would love to encourage our listeners to um to share their stories tell us how you go with that little challenge that jt set and we'd love to hear from you next month i want to talk to everybody about status deniers and brand fanatics that's a big one status deniers and brand fanatics it's very cool some some good shit on that excellent (laughs) we look forward to um to having jt back next month for that one okay thanks jt see you listeners see you later fitness business podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners here's a quick word from one of our partners rex roundtables is a powerful forum in europe the u.s and australia for club owners and personal training business owners in australia justin tamsett from active management runs the rex roundtables under the brand industry leaders roundtable In the show notes for today's episode, you'll find a YouTube link for you to watch and hear more about the roundtables. This 90-second video is a great explanation, so don't forget to check it out in today's show notes. As you know, we're huge fans of podcasting for marketing your business and helping share information. So for all of you out there who are thinking about starting your own podcast, this next segment is for you. Our resident podcast expert, Sharon Towsley, is going to share some tips to help kickstart your podcast. Sharon, last month you told us about how to get started identifying our podcast by specifically defining our target audience, creating an avatar and choosing a show format. This month, you said you're going to share with us some equipment options with our listeners so they can get started recording. Hi, Chantel Wright, and thanks for having me back on the show today. As you know, my business is helping people manage their podcast and internet radio shows. I do almost everything from lining up guests and minor audio editing to submitting clients' podcasts to a media host, establishing a presence in the major podcast directories like iTunes and Stitcher, and providing online marketing for their shows. The one thing I've not personally done is record a podcast audio. So the majority of my recommendations here today are going to come from my clients and my go-to guy, John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. That sounds good to me. So tell us, what do we need to do to get started? 
Well, the first thing you'll need, of course, is a computer, a PC or a Mac. Next is a microphone. A good low-end model microphone is the Logitech Clear Chat Comfort USB headset. You can get that for around $30. And this headset plugs into your computer's USB port and provides decent quality and hands-free use. It's a nice place to start. A step up would be the medium range ATR2100 USB microphone. This is John Lee Dumas's number one recommendation. When you combine cost and quality, nothing compares. The cost is around $60 and it also plugs into your USB port. This is a freestanding microphone, not a headset. On the high end, you have the Heil, that's H-E-I-L, PR40. This microphone costs $327, but you can't beat the quality it provides. If you're going to go with this option and the XLR connection it provides versus the USB connection, you're also going to need a mixer. Okay, so once we've chosen a microphone, what do we do next? Next is recording and editing software. John Lee Dumas's software of choice is Adobe Edition. And the monthly access price is $20. If you're looking for something less expensive, another choice that's free for PC and Mac users is Audacity. Audacity is great, and it's my personal choice for editing audios. Another free option is GarageBand, but this is available only for Mac users. GarageBand comes pre-installed on Mac machines. Okay, so what would you suggest for those of us wanting to record interviews? Well, if you're wanting to record interviews, a good option is Skype combined with a call recorder. These next two recommendations both have a one-time cost of around $30. And first, for Mac users, there's Ecamm Call Recorder. And then for PC users, there's something called Pamela. You can Google both of those, and they both work well and are inexpensive options. So those are some quick suggestions from my clients and one of the top podcasters in the world. Don't feel you have to spend a ton of money to get up and running. Several options are not only low cost, but free. So you don't have to break the bank in order to kickstart your podcast. That sounds great, Sharon. So now that we have our first podcast recorded, how do we polish it up and make it sound really professional? Great question. The next step is going to be adding your intros and your outros to set your listeners' expectations and provide them calls to action. Intros and outros are the snippet you hear at the beginning and end of a podcast that often has music and an announcer sharing certain information. That sounds fantastic. So next month, Sharon will share with us some ideas on how to use intros and outros for setting expectations and giving calls to action. Thanks for your time today, Sharon. Yeah, thank you, Chantel. As you know, our goal at the Fitness Business Podcast is to help you grow your fitness business. So I love it when I can tell you about new products, programs, and solutions to help you do just that. Our show would not be possible without the support of our sponsors. And one of those awesome sponsors is Visual Fitness Planner. But before I tell you more about them, let me ask you these questions. What is your membership closing percentages? What percentage of your members at the point of sale sign up for a complimentary orientation session? What percentage of your new members actually show up for their complimentary orientation session? And most importantly, what percentage of your membership buys personal training? These are the numbers that you have to be asking yourself and measuring every single day. As the old saying goes, if you're not measuring your numbers, you're not managing your numbers. A club set show close numbers are significantly improved because of the Visual Fitness Planner. The VFP provides a turnkey system for marketing, capturing and integrating new members into a healthy lifestyle change. The VFP automates your existing sales, marketing and orientation systems with the power of its visually impacting technology. VFP calculates a person's health risks for diseases, it predicts their health age, It creates a before and after 3D image of their body and calculates how long it will take to achieve their goals. And in this process, increases your membership and personal training sales and overall member retention. To check out more about the VFP, head over to their website at myvfp.com.au. And of course, a copy of that website link is in today's show notes. It's time for the Fitness Business Podcast Wrap. 
There you have it. That was another episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. And here are my top takeaways from this week's guest, Justin Tamsin. When you have a new person, you can train them. But when you have a team that's been around for a while, you need to coach them. When we understand our customer's learning style, whether it be visual, auditory or kinesthetic, then we have to flip ourselves to match that style. The consumer is now living in their own universe. Therefore, we're a guest in that universe. We have to respect that. The consumer will be happy to let us into their universe if we deliver a seamless, comprehensive and personalised service. We have to streamline our information process to ensure a positive experience for a prospect or a new member. And with every contact we have with a prospect, aim to ensure that they are loved in, not locked in. On next week's show, we have the 2014 Idea Fitness Instructor of the Year Award winner, Krista Popovich. We're talking to Krista about some topics that I am very passionate about, group fitness and personal training. Krista is going to tell us about some specific activities that we can create an awesome PT and group X team. We'll also explore the jigsaw puzzle of group programming, and she's going to share her top three ideas to grow personal training. Before I say goodbye for today, don't forget to rate the Fitness Business Podcast on iTunes. Go to iTunes, search for the Fitness Business Podcast under the title Ratings and Reviews. Just click there and give us a star rating and write a comment. If you've got any suggestions, comments or feedback about the show, please email me at chantal at activemgmt.com.au or if you've got a question about owning or managing a fitness business, send it through and we might even feature it in an upcoming show. Plus, don't forget that you can find all of our previous episodes and show notes located on our brand new website, which is fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Until next week, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what's woven into the lives of others. You have been listening to the world's number one podcast called the Fitness Business Podcast, brought to you by Active Management. We are dedicated to helping your fitness business hashtag grow in 2015. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au for resources, tools, and more to help you. And by far, the best value for you is to become a member. So join today at www.activemgmt.com.au.